It's no good, Bernie. I can't go another step. You'll have to send for the rescue team. Don't give up now, Peter. Oh. We've sent for help. The mountain rescue have sent for a big, ginormous crane to get you out. You'll be all right, really. Oh. Hey, what are you two doing down there? Will you hurry up? Well, it's Peter is exhausted, but we'll have to rally him round because you know what day it is. It's Friday! It's five to five and it's crazy! Noisy lot we've got this week. Welcome to another program. And as usual, I'd like to start with a great man with little talent. Now I better rephrase that. He's a little man with no talent. Here he is, Peter Glay. Well, hello there. Now this week I'm going to talk to you about music. Music. How I love classical music. When I hear good classical music, I just want to throw myself into it. Pity it wasn't Handel's water music. You could throw yourself into that. <laughs> I might tell you that I know a great deal about classical music. Oh, yeah. oh yes, indeed. And remember what the bard said, if music be the food of love... Get your fish fingers off my piano! <laughs> he said nothing of the kind. He said, play on. Peter, yeah. if you can find the other needle, you'll have the London Symphony in stitches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, be that as it may, I might inform you that I happen to have a good ear for music. He's right, you know. Look, it's shaped like a euphonium. <laughs> oh. My parents, I might tell you, two ignoramuses. Yes. They gave me five hundred pounds and told me to go and improve my musical knowledge. Well, what did you spend the money on? <laughs> I went to a good musical college, didn't oh, I? Did you? And I learned all my three Bs, all about Beethoven, Brahms, and Bach. Bach, ha <laughs> ha! Johann Sebastian Bach. One of the best trios on television. One of the best. <laughs> <laughs> Not a trio. Oh, well, that's right. Johann said he was leaving to form his own group. Oh, did he? No, no, Johann Sebastian Bach, one of the same. Oh, I see, they formed a company. Yeah, no, they were not a company. Well, they get slammed for taxation, then. Look, Johann Sebastian Bach, one and the same person now, is that clear? Oh, it's all Bach to front to me. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, if you two had gone to go and listen to some good music, you could hear some of the Albert Hall. Hey, listen, I was at the Albert Hall the other night. Oh, yes. Watching Big Daddy and Mick McManus, I suppose. Oh, no, 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 there was a full orchestra, oh. but it was just a few people there. Oh, oh was it Phil Harmonic? No, it was half Phil the Harmonic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I might inform you, of course, that I, as you've gone, actually, on Tuesday night, like I did, yes. you could have heard Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. Heard it? I bought two bags full. <laughs> Actually, Peter, I did go to listen to a concert at the Royal Albert Hall, oh, yes. and it was conducted by that American fellow, um, Andy... Andy Breadbin. Andy Breadbin? Yes. Andre Breadbin! Oh. Well, I was trying to use my loaf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't sliced. Anyway, oh. I might inform you that yes. it just so happens that I have my own private box at the Albert Hall. Oh, oh yes, That's next to you know whose. You know whose? Hasn't he got a Chinese takeaway restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> no, not you know who. You know whose, you know them. Ben, the the actual... Royal Yes, to whom we absolutely. Oh. Yes, and you know, he himself came yes. into the box one night. He leaned over to me and he said, Hello, Porky. I didn't know it was old age pensioners <laughs> night tonight. <laughs> He said nothing of the kind. No, he looked at me and he said, Mr. Glaze, Mr. Glaze, just like that, not a bit louder. And he said, Mr. Glaze, what beautiful music. How could anyone possibly forget Schumann's Fourth Symphony? Brahms could. <laughs> I mean, Brahms could. Well, when he was asked what he thought of Schumann's Fourth Symphony, Brahms said, oh, forget it. <laughs> hey, my Uncle Willie has bought a new pair of shoes, you know. Here we go. Talking about Schumann, my yeah. Uncle Willie went into the shoe shop for a new pair of shoes. Yeah. And he said to the assistant, these shoes are too tight. Really? So she said, try them with the tongue out. Uh-huh. The, 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 the. <laughs> <laughs> You're so ignorant, you two. You probably think that List is something you take on shopping list. Hey, List, he was a good lawyer, him. List was a musician. No, no, it was him that got Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff was Russian. That's right, he was rushing to work. He got Nick for speeding. <laughs> oh, for God. Peter, listen, I must be honest with you. I don't really know very much about classical music. Uh, I used to think that a crotchet was a thing that stopped Long John Silver from falling over. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks a semi brief is a bunged up nostril. <laughs> <laughs> I wait a minute. What? I could have been on that program, Face the Music, mate. Oh, well, I weren't you? I was facing the wrong way. I'm not surprised. Bernie, to be on that program, you've got to be really smart. Smart. You know, they only play them a few bars of a piece of music and they recognise it instantly. Well, well, so can I. Really? Oh, come on, they prove it. All come right, on, let's hear some music. Right, come right, on, let's hear some music. Come on, let's hear some Come on, then. Don't tell me, don't tell me. I've got it. Uh, come on, come on. I've got it. Yes. It was a piano. It was a piano. But what piece? That 
piece at the front where the black and white bits are. Oh, my goodness sake, let's sing the song! <laughs> Of the masters dead and gone. Those horses of those famous brothers, Joe and Dickie Strauss. They keep the dancers spinning in the New York Opera House. And I hear that Claude de Bussy just found your house made about. In music, we the fool of love. Spaghetti bolognese. It's a full of love. love. I, I really like it. it. If music be the food of love, play on. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we know all about music, and thank you for the music as usual supplied by Bert Hayes and his orchestra. Now let's meet. Now, which school are we all from this week? Merchant Haley School, Northwood. Northwood. That's surrounded by golf courses up there, isn't it? Now your name is Roby, is it? Robbie. Have, uh, they've left a B out. And we've got Andrew one. Andrew, yeah. Andrew. Uh, two. And two Andrews. Right. Whoever they're going to chair for here in our studio audience, we'll have to uh, see whether one of the Andrews or Robbie is going to go through for game number one. Let's welcome Val to the programme. A round of applause for Val. <laughs> She's got me whistle, which means it's time to go over and play game number one. Over we go, lads. That's it. That's the other Andrew there. Now, it's a very easy game. I'm going to try and give you a demonstration. You've got to stand on here, all right, and then pick up as many skittles as possible and keep them on the edge of this sort of gyro. Get the idea? I won't give you a show because I'm not very good at balancing, but I hope you three are. So, 45 seconds. Let's see if you can get most on in that time. Ready, steady. <laughs> He's got them all there, and you've got them all there, and he's missing one here. Oh, you've dropped one, one rolled over there. You couldn't get at it, so that means at the end, Robbie is the winner! <laughs> well, Robbie, let's help you all down. Let's help you all down, that's it. OK, that way. Over this way, please, Robbie. Let's show you off once again, because this is the young man you're going to see later in Double or Drop. So let's have a nice, uh, loud cheer for Robbie! Yeah! Hold on, Rob. Keep over that way, please. Bad luck to our two... To our two runners up, but there's your consolation prizes, which you both know. Both Andrews are lovely Cracker Jack Pins! <laughs> good game, good game, good game. But now it's time for music. And with their latest record called Tryouts for the Human Race, let's have a great Cracker Jack welcome for Sparks! <laughs>
Now let's meet the girl Sparks flying here, because one of you is going through the final. Let's meet Sean, it is, isn't it? Yes. Which school are you from, Sean? George Abbott in Guildford. George Abbott in Guildford, aha! And... Lucy. Lucy. Alison. Right, now we're going to play a game, sort of bagatelle. Do you know the game of bagatelle? You ever heard of that game? Well, we'll show you as we go over now to play game number two. Thank you very much, Valerie. Well, it's a sort of bagatelle. We've got some golf balls here. They've got to roll them up round the board here, and you see as a well-known face or a caricature will come up if the ball comes down right over the middle. OK, then it tips it over like that. And the first one to get three, or the one who's got most in 45 seconds, will be the winner. Are we ready, girls? 45. Come on, Sean! Not too hard. There's one over. Grab hold of the middle. Alison, because that was very close, that, wasn't it? Huh? Yes. Good game. Like the game, did you? And bad luck to Sean as well, but of course, uh, they'll be getting their Cracker Jack pens, one over this side and one over this side. Thank you very much, Alison. We'll see you later, Lucy, in Double or Drop. But now it's film time. Yes, now, can we think back to last summer? Did anybody go camping? Did you go camping, caravanning at all? How lovely it is, under the lovely clear skies with the rain pouring down, just like this.
a marvellous record in the charts at the moment, and it's been recorded by a terrific group of school children from Manchester. So let's welcome them to the programme now. The Ramblers are going to sing The Sparrow! <laughs> Sound. That was the sound of the, one of the cabbages we're going to have because it's double or drop once again. And let's just refresh our memories. We had Robbie in the first game for which school, Robbie? Merchant Taylor's School, Northwood. Merchant Taylor's Northwood. Um, Lucy from George Abbott School in Guildford. Oh, Guildford, good, good. <laughs> and let's welcome back for the. Is it the third week? Yeah, third it week. is third week for Michael. Let's hear it for Michael. <laughs> I don't think you've got many of your fans with you again, have you? No, only three. Only three this week? Well, it's going up. <laughs> OK, Val, let's have a look at the prizes. Have anybody any idea what they might... Come and have a look over here and see what you might like to pick if you, if you become a winner. He's had them all so far, have you? What? Well, we'll find out later what they're going to win. But Val, let's have the questions, please. Ladies first, which colour would you like? The yellow, that means you don't start off. You'd rather have the green. Ah, he's cunning, you see, because the green is the last one in order. So Champ will be starting with the first question as we go over once again to play Double or Drop. Over we go. <laughs> Right, we all know the rules. You should know the rules, Champ, by now, of course. Nice, easy questions, and then every time you get an answer right, you get lots of presents. And if you get it wrong, you get the same presents, but you get a cabbage, and if we drop anything in the ground like this, <laughs> you get another sign of the uh, klaxon. You knew it was a klaxon, that, did you? Klaxon horn? Yes. Klaxon horn, that's it. It wasn't a question. <laughs> I gave you cabbages to that, you got it right anyway. Here we go. Question number one, then, for our resident Champ, Michael. The owl and the something went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. Pussycat. Pussycat, there we are. And I tell you what, I've been very kind, very kind lately with uh, giving chances on first answers. But uh, I hope I don't have to do that this week because they're nicely. You're not too nervous, are you, Lucy? No. Now, right, Puff the Magic Dragon. Live by the sea. Yeah. Uh, can you go on at all? I frolicked in the autumn mist in an ankle on an e. We should give you, we should give you extra prizes for that. <laughs> you don't want to sing it as well, do you? No, thanks. All right, then. No, no. <laughs> very nicely. No, no cabbages yet. 
Actually, she only had to give me one word. She gave me half the song. Right, over to you, Robbie. Nelly the something packed her trunk and said goodbye to the circus. The elephant. That's right, OK. <laughs> now, be very careful, all of you, because quite a few of our contestants in the last couple of weeks have been uh, dropping a lot of their presents and getting cabbages for not holding on to them. All right, in legend, who was the magician who guided King Arthur? The magician who guided King Arthur. Merlin. Merlin. He always takes time, doesn't he? He always gets right at the end. That was Merlin. That was well done. How does a kangaroo carry its young? In a pouch. In a pouch. Right, right. <laughs> and here's yours. What is the name of the lead singer in the group, The Rolling Stones? The Rolling Stones. Have a good think. The Rolling Stones. Got big lips. Any idea? No. No idea at all? Anybody know? Yeah! Mick Jagger. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. It's so much easier up there than it is up there. First cabbage, then, goes to Robbie. And, champ, here comes a slightly harder question for you now. In the old money, how many shillings were there in a pound? In the old money. Before we changed in the year 1971 or two, was it? Anybody? Oh, it's well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, 71. 22. I'm sorry, that's wrong. 20. There were 20 shillings and an old pound. So the first cabbage to the champ. That's for Michael. Right. Over to you, Lucy, in the lead at the moment with no cabbages at all. Who was the architect who designed St Paul's Cathedral? <laughs> who was that? Me. That was you, Val. She's got such a collection of cabbages at home, that girl. I tell you, right. I don't know. You don't know? No. Sir Christopher Wren? Oh, so, yes, right, first cabbage in the middle, first cabbage in the middle. Right, over to you, Robbie, so you're not the only one with the cabbage now. What is the capital of Czechoslovakia? <laughs> Who was that? Who was that? Who was that? Oh, oh dear, champ. Oh, champ, he's oh. just dropped his crisps. <laughs> he's dro no, they're not. They are his mixed fruits. Oh, yeah. And another cabbage. Oh, dear, two cabbages for the champ. He's holding his breath now. As I come back to that question, you have a little more time to think of it. The capital of Czechoslovakia. Quiet, please, from the audience. Especially for the merchant tailors. Have a think of your map of Europe. Five, I'm going to give you five seconds now. Four, three, two, one. Tell me anything. No, I don't know. Prague. Prague. Second cabbage. So it's two cabbages to the fellas, and it's one to Lucy in the middle there. Is a sea anemone a sea animal? Or a sea flower? A sea anemone, is it a sea animal or a sea flower? I know the answer because I've got it written in front of me, but do you? Sea flower. It's not, I'm afraid, it's a sea animal. It's a sea animal, eats small fish and shrimps and other small marine animals. So I'm afraid, champ, third time unlucky for you because you've got your third cabbage. But let's hear it for our one time champ. He's taking lots of presents home with him. Let's hear it for Michael. <laughs> right. Bad luck, Michael, but lovely to have him on the programme. Now it's your turn, madam. Which planet is furthest from the sun? Furthest. Pluto. Beg your pardon? Pluto. Pluto, quite right. <laughs> two cabbages to go, Robbie, two cabbages to go. On which great river? Quiet now. On which great river do the people of Egypt depend? You've the had Nile. The Nile. He's did all right, so I was just going to say... It's the luck of the draw, but you've had a lot of uh, geographical questions tonight. That was Val again, so no more. Right, over to you now. Lucy, when Captain Cook first landed in Australia in 1770, what was the name he gave to the bay in which he arrived? Victoria? No, no. Botany Bay. Botany Bay, that means the second cabbage over here. So it's two cabbages each. Are you ready? In the 1850s, two men independently conceived the theory of evolution. Now, can you name one of them? Theory of evolution, one of them. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, yeah! right again. <laughs> All right, it's the next one. It's the next one now who uh, answers wrongly. will get the third cabbage and will be out. All right, so it's between two of you because we've got right back into the right order. So your question's on the yellow page. Who wrote the play The Importance of Being Earnest? The Importance of Being... <laughs> Oh, no! Oh, dear! Oh, she dropped her... Oh! 
Well, the Mars bars. Oh dear. Well, you can take them home with you as a compensation because we've got to give you your third cabbage. But thank you very much. Let's hear it for Lucy. <laughs> and that means I'm going to help you off here because it doesn't matter if you drop all your presents now. That our winner is Robbie. <laughs> Later. Right, we'll come back to those later. Thank you very much. And you got his name in already? Yes. Oh, good. Did you spell it right this time? Yes. Oh, we've got, we've got, you'll be known as Roby from now on. You know that, don't you? George Roby himself. You got a present there you'd like? It's the metal detector. You want the metal detector? Hopefully he's going to find something nice and valuable in his back garden. But the last thing I'd like you to do before we go into the finale is to shout the magic word. He's going to shout it. I want you to shout it back nice and loud. Are we ready? Cracker Jack! <laughs> That's marvellous. Right, thank you. We'll be seeing Robbie, or Roby, as he's going to be known in the future, next week in Double or Drop. And now it's finale time as we join around the round table, the Knights of King Arthur. <laughs> shorter sword than this? No, I have not. And get your feet off the legendary round table. You are not at home, you know. I am, you know. I live here. I'm the lodger from the back bedroom. Oh, sir! Oh, well, in that case... Oh. <laughs> Would you care to join me in a glass of wine? I don't really think there'd be room, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I say it. I do wish Arthur would hurry up and come home. You know, I'm very worried about him. I mean, he's been gone three nights and his suppers are getting very cold. Where's he gone to? He's gone to do battle with the Black Knight. The Black Knight? Yes. Oh, dear, old, he's a rough lad, that Black Knight. He hasn't got hairs on his chest, he's got twigs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do understand that he's an expert with a sword, lance, mace and frisbee. Oh, and that's why I'm very worried about Arthur. He's only a little chap. I know, and he's fat as well. <laughs> I don't know why you married him. You should have saved yourself for the love of a tall, gallant and handsome knight. I don't know any knights like that. Yes, you do. Me. Oh. Lancelot. Oh, Guinevere. Yes. Oh, me housemaid knee. <laughs> Let's give it a back. I have always admired you from afar. Oh, how nice. She's not so good close up, though. <laughs> Guinevere! Yes. Give us a kiss. Oh, get off! But Guinevere, I fancy you. Oh, but what about King Arthur? I don't fancy him. Oh. <laughs> Besides which, he has gone away to do mortal combat with the Black Knight. He will never return from him. Do you mind? You said that without moving your lip. <laughs> Give us a kiss, girl. Oh. Hey, just a minute. Don't go out for half an hour to start bashing the Black Knight and come home and find me best friend, Sir Lancelot, who kisses me missus. Ooh, defend yourself, sir. <laughs> Don't have to be Done the washing up before I went. Oh, yes. Come and sit down, I'll tell you more about it. But I must tell you're looking well. 
You're a right little smasher, you are. And you are a lovely woman. When you're in love with a beautiful woman, you watch your friends. Watch your friends, watch your friends. When you're in love with a beautiful woman, it never ends. Just convinces us more When you're in love with a beautiful woman You watch your eyes Watch your eyes, baby, watch your eyes This black canite, easy as tough as they reckon. Yes. Does he really play tiddlywinks with man all covers? Oh. I should say he's even worse. I don't know how I'm going to defeat him. I am at my wit's end. You haven't had far to travel, have you? <laughs> <laughs> now, it says speech to the middle, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Now then, I return, he's going to return for a second bout, you know that. Oh, a return bout? Yes. In that case, lock up the dogs. Lock up the dogs. Hide the cats. Hide the cats. Look out for your false teeth. Yes. We must panic, all of us. You sit here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not afraid of him, are you? Afraid? Yeah. Me? Yeah. What was when I was with the Mad Duke of Manchester? Oh, I once got rid of a whole troop of men with one straw. Ah, yes. You got the British cavalry. No, I got German measles. German <laughs> Not only that, yes, yes. I'm an expert in unarmed combat. Are you really? Oh, yes. I once got rid of a platoon of men in 24 hours single-handed. Really? I'd have done them before lunch if I'd used both hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm an expert as well. Are you? Black belts in karate. Yes. Brown braces my dad gave me for Christmas. Yes. I like those. Yes. Just yes. watch this. Right, right. Oh, that's what I need. Oh, oh, oh. All right, all right. Stop jumping about. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Oh, with your brain, I shouldn't bother. I've got to. Don't come near me, then. I don't want it. No, no, no. no I've got a marvellous idea. I'll gather all me knobbly knits together yes. and we'll go down to the Black Knight's place and do him over. He'll never be able to fight all my knits together, will he? I'll Come call the lad. Idea. Come on, yes. lads. Do your king. He's having one Sir of his turns. Yes, Sir Conference! <laughs> Sir Cynthia! I worry about that boy. <laughs> Come on, lads, to your king, to Arthur, your king. Arthur, I don't want to worry you. No. Well, then, what's the matter? They've all gone. They've all gone. What do you mean, they've all gone? Well, exactly what I say. They've all gone. They've all gone away. They've gone where? They've all gone abroad to find Holy Grail. Well, why haven't you gone? Because I've got a plastic one at home. I get free with a gallon of petrol. Isn't it marvellous? I go out for five minutes to fight the Black Knight, and I come back. And find they've all gone on their holidays to the south of France. Anyway, for some sunshine, you'll have to fight him. Me? Yes, you. <laughs> I'm not fighting him. Oh, my mum said I mustn't fight strange nights. Oh. Besides which, I've got this trouble with my back. Back, back, back. What's the matter with your back? I've got a yellow streak running out the middle of it. <laughs> well, you should be nice. He's going to be here at any minute. Well, in that case, he'll mangle us. He'll strangle us. Don't panic. I'm sure you'll think of something else. Now, just think. I'm but thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Have you thought of anything? No. Then panic! Panic! panic. Oh, yes, he'll be here in a minute. Oh. Panic! Oh. panic. Oh. Good morning, missus. Morning. Nice weather for the time of year. Better than yesterday, isn't it? Yes. Oh, morning, gents. Nice weather for the time of year. Better yeah, than yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Look, listen, Good Charlie. Morning. Why don't you just leave your three pints and push off? All right. Three pies, Paige. Thank you. Any cream, ma'am? No cream, thank you. Do a nice line in yogurts, fruit juices? We do not want any fruit juice, thank no. you. How about some sausages? Sausages? sausages no, thanks. <laughs> Oh, oh, and I don't want a cabbage, thanks. <laughs> just a minute, just a minute. Whilst you were outside, did you see a great tall fella, long piece of rainwater, very ugly, dark hair, big hooter? No. Looked a bit like you. Can't say I did, sir. Oh, hey, wait a moment, you. Is that your page? I didn't know Milkman had pages. He does. He could never remember his lines. Oh, wow. Now, you see, it's a bonus scheme from the dairy. Oh. Every time you make an order, you get the page. Well, I'm hoping to get a whole book. Oh, what a lovely idea. You must let me read it when you finished it. Hang about a minute, hang about. It's him. Who? The Black Knight. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. No. Now they've recognised me, I suppose. <laughs> 
I'll have to fight him. Well, fight him. Is that what you yes. came here for? No, I've always been disguised as a black knight because I've been embarrassed by my name. Your name? But what is your name? Niggle. Niggle? Niggle? <laughs> Wait a moment. <laughs> Revelation. You are not Niggle. No? You are Nigel. Oh, Nigel. Nigel is a Become Sir Nigel! Oh. Oh. I must be happy, I must be happy in my world.